رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I have to admit that I am delighted with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal that the organizers arranged it so that we would have dinner before my speech because then I would have had second thoughts would it be worth having dinner or not now I had my dinner خلاص. I don't care about the speech it's something extra it's a bonus for me and after seeing the presentation to tell you the truth I have a very hard heart but it brought tears to my eyes I could not watch half of it maybe I'm homesick and maybe the presentation was good but seriously when it comes to giving and when you see that this small thing that you gave is so huge, the impact in this world, you don't know what the impact would be on the hereafter. When we talk about sadaqah, Arabs relate to it. And this is not racist. I mean, they relate to the word in their language because it is derived from a sidq, which is truthfulness. So, sadaqah is anything you do for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether it is financial or non financial, whether you feed people, whether you offer them drink, whether you clothe them whether you shelter them, even what you feed your wife and children, this is called sadaqah, to the extent that the Prophet wasallam said, smiling in the face of a Muslim brother is a sadaqah. And this is addressed to the brothers, not to the sisters. Now, it is without doubt that money is our soulmate. We often lie to our spouses when we say to them, you are my soulmate. Money is my soulmate. And this is why if I'm put in a situation of a calamity or life threatening, I would easily give my money to buy my soul. This money that I possess, that I have, I can put it in the hand of a widow who I will never ever meet until the day of judgment. I can put it in a hand of a blind man who's needy, who will never ever see me in this life. I can put it to help a person who's flat broke and has nothing in this world and would never ever benefit me in this life. I could put it in the hand of a wayfarer, a traveler who is disconnected from his country, from his family. Look at the Rohingyas. May Allah Azza wa Jal ease their pain and suffering. I'll never meet them. But Allah Azza wa Jal would keep and preserve this for me. This process of giving, as long as you intend by it the face of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is a manifestation of your truth. And that's why we call it sadaqah. Means that it proves that you are sincere and truthful and you're anticipating the reward from Allah on the day of judgment. If people did not have this in them, and that is the belief, the man 
would not have left his farm and garden for the sake of Allah. Abu Talha, Al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, came to the Prophet والسلام, when this ayah was revealed. Allah says, never will you attain the good, that is the reward, until you spend in the way of Allah from that which you love. And whatever you spend indeed, Allah is knowing of it. Ayah revealed immediate reaction. Abu Talha comes to the Prophet ﷺ, and he was among the richest of the companions. He had so many farms, so many places, property. But this particular property was adjacent to the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. It, has, it had nice shades and it had pure sweet water, water well. So the Prophet used to come out والسلام, and drink from its water. Abu Talha came to the Prophet وسلم, and said, O Prophet of Allah, this ayah was revealed and the most precious wealth I have is this garden of Bayruha. So take it and do with it whatever you want. Immediate reaction. The companions reacted positively because they believed. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, a very strange man. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, none of my companions had benefited me with his wealth more than Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. Therefore, block all doors in the masjid except the door of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr started crying. He said, me and whatever I own belongs to you, O Prophet of Allah. True and sincere reaction from Abu Bakr. Three times in his life, he got out of his wealth. Imagine if you have three cars, two buildings, a bank account, and you say, all of this is for the sake of Allah. You may able to do it once, though it's difficult. He did it three times. Umar ibn Khattab once said, today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr in competing to Allah. So he took half of his wealth, came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, this is for Allah's sake. So the Prophet said, what did you leave for your family? I said half of it, the same, similar amount. So 50%, I kept 50%. So he said, may Allah bless you. Abu Bakr came and he put something heavy in front of the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, this is for Allah's sake. So he said, what did you leave for your family? He said, nothing except Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. Everything he had and possessed, he gave it for the sake of Allah. Umar said, by Allah, I will never race you, Abu Bakr. I can't compete. This is how the companions used to react. May Allah be pleased with them. And when you look at their actions, you understand the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. When he says, was sadaqatu burhan. Sadaqa, the thing that you do for the sake of Allah, is an evidence, is a proof of what? In a court of law? No, this is a proof of your belief. This is an evidence that you believe it is Allah Azza wa Jal who gives and that Allah alone who rewards. Charity, sadaqa, is not something new. It begins with us from the time we are born. And it goes with us till the time we die. When you're blessed with a child, what do you do on the seventh day? You shave the hair, you weigh it, and you give the weight in silver in charity. Sunnah. You slaughter two rams for a baby boy, or one ram for a baby girl, and you give part of it 
in charity. So from the very beginning of your life in this world, you give. Not you, maybe your parents. And this process of giving remains with you until the moment you die. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and spend in the way of Allah. From what we have provided you before death approaches one of you. And he says, my Lord. This is on the death bed, huh? He's dying. What does he say? He says, my Lord. If only you would delay me for a brief term. So I would give charity and be among the righteous. The first thing he said, not to pray. Not to fast. I just want to be delayed so that I can give. And this explains to us why charity is important. To the extent that Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, it was mentioned to me, and of course, who would mention it to him? The Prophet, he said, it was mentioned to me that good deeds boast and compete. And Sadaqah says, I'm the best among you all. Sadaqah is difficult. No person would say that it is easy to give. You feel when you give away that it is taking part of your heart. There are many virtues of Sadaqah. And if we would like to speak about Sadaqah in detail, this would take us to breakfast. I don't know if it's in the menu. So we have to conclude yani, as early as possible, inshallah. But in general, charity, sadaqah is divided into two types. Sadaqah that is mandatory known as zakat. And sadaqah that is voluntary. So we will not speak about such classifications of zakat, whether it's on gold, silver, and currency, whether it is on things that are prepared to be sold, uh, uh, merchandise, or the things, the crops that are coming from the ground, or the livestock. This is too detailed, and it's not what we want. We would like to just be reminded of the virtues of sadaqah, because in this world, we tend to be distracted. So anyone, any organization has a mission and vision statement. We as Muslims, we have this. Everyone knows that we are in this world for a period of time and then it's death. Eternity, paradise, inshallah. So we would like to build our house. We would like to furnish it. We would like to have everything in it. And this happens with the grace of Allah Azza wa And after that, with what you give. So what are the virtues of sadaqah? There's a promise from Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah says, spend, O son of Adam, and I shall spend on you. You believe that? Wallah, ya Sheikh, it's difficult. It's pretty, I, I believe. Don't get me wrong. But if I give 20% of what I possess, ya khi, who gave you the other 80%? Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Waj'ala lakum al-sam'a wal-absara wal-ifad wal-af'id. It is Allah who got you out of your mother wombs knowing nothing. No PhD. No masters, no BA, no diploma, no languages, possessing zero. Who made you who you are? My biceps. No. Who made you what you are is Allah Azza wa Jal. Attributing anything to other than Him is shirk. Imagine if I say I managed to secure contracts for my company. For the last physical year, I managed to reduce cost. I managed to gather money. This is shirk. As Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, says, you have to attribute it to who? To Allah. So whatever we're enjoying at the moment, it's not from me. 
it's from Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you spend, Allah would spend more and will bless more. And not only that, Allah would appoint an angel to make dua. People come, Shaykh, make dua for me. Why? You are, mashallah, scholar, you're righteous. Yeah, Some come to me and say, make ruqya. Why? He said, Allah, I have this jinn, I have this. I told him, if I do ruqya, my jinn will go into you. You'll be double possessed. Depend on Allah Azza wa Jal. But when there is an angel making dua for you, you're in good hands. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, there is no day on which the people get up, wake up. But two angels come down, they descend. And one of them says, oh Allah, give in compensation to the one who spends in charity. And to all those who spent the 250,000 ringgits, may Allah Azza wa Jal give them compensation for what they had spent. And may Allah Azza wa Jal give those who will spend more, more than those who had spent it. The other angel says, O oh Allah, destroy the one who withholds. A'udhu billah. So if you withhold, the angel is making dua against you. And this also was emphasized by the Prophet ﷺ. We think that our money saves us. We have insurance policy. We have stocks, alhamdulillah. We have offshore accounts just in case we have to leave. We have so many investments here and there. So we should be safe. Abu Dharr al-Ghafari, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I came to the Prophet ﷺ and he was in the shade of the Kaaba. And I heard him say, they are the losers by Allah, the Lord of this Kaaba. They are the losers. So I came to him and said, oh, Prophet of Allah, who are the losers? May Allah not make me and you among them. Who are the losers? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, they are those who gather. They, they are those who collect wealth except those who say like this and like this, who give away in charity and sadaqah. They're not the losers. But those who continue to check their record books, how much they have, and they do not spend in the cause of Allah, the Prophet swears by Allah, the Lord of the Kaaba, that they are the losers. Air conditioning is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, especially in Malaysia. Well, actually, no, especially in Saudi Arabia. Without air conditioning, we will die. But on the day of judgment, it is 50,000 years long. And the Prophet tells us that the sun draws closer from the servants of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they sweat according to their good deeds and bad deeds. Those who have good deeds, their sweat reaches their ankles. Those who are lesser in deeds, their sweat reaches their knees. Their sweat reaches their waists, and some their sweat reaches their noses. They drown their, their own sweat. So what to do? We need ACs. We need a form of protection. Don't worry. The Prophet ﷺ is giving you this protection. And he says, every one of you will be under the shade of his sadaqah on the day of judgment. So I could care less about the sun. I give. I have my umbrella, I have the sadaqah, and especially those who spend with the right hand and conceal it so that their left does not know how much he's spending. They will be in the shade of Allah the Almighty, the shade of his throne subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the narrators of this hadith, his name is Abu Mirthad. He said, they said about him that every single day, he would always give a charity. Even if it's a piece of onion or a piece of bread, he has to give charity every single day so that he would be under his shade on the day of judgment. Now, the past, I would not say month, maybe the past year. How much did we give in the cause of Allah? 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. One says that, yeah, I gave last year something which is good, but this has to be sustainable. This has to be a continuous process. Imagine, we have Dr. Zakir with us. He prescribes medication for me. And he says, take two pills of this every day. And I take the whole bottle. I just want quick relief. What will happen? I'll die. But if I take the dosages as prescribed, continuous, sustainable, I will live with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. Likewise, when you keep on giving, sustainable, continuous. As the management of an organization, uh, 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 institution, I can plan. I know how much is coming. And this is good for everyone. When I see orphans, my heart breaks. Because our heart is hardened, is darkened, is filled with fitna, backbiting, hatred, envy, grudges. We need medication for our heart. Unfortunately, Dr. Zakir cannot provide me with this. So I have to go to the prophetic sunnah. What is the cure for my heart? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, if you want your heart to be softened, feed the needy and rub on the head of an orphan. The more you help and show your compassion when you feed the orphan for the sake of Allah, not because there's a photo shoot. You're doing it for the sake of Allah. You love the orphan because he's in need. He is broken and he has no one except those who give a helping hand. Allah Azza wa would make your heart soft. Now, when we come to accountancy, okay, Sheikh, I have 100,000 ringgit. And if I give 20%, 20,000, 80,000 remains, uh, this is not very profitable. Wallahi, it is profitable. I'm, I sw I'm swearing on that, yalla. I'm not going to expiate my oath. Wallahi, it is profitable. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, charity does not decrease wealth. This is a prophet, do you believe? Alayhi salatu wasalam. So one would say, okay, I believe what I can see. Yesterday, it was five digits, 100,000 in my bank account. Now, after I gave 20,000, it is four digits. Was it still five? Was it, was it six? I, I didn't, I wasn't good in calculus or, or, or mathematics. So 100,000 is six digits. But nobody seems to pay attention because when the stomachs are full, all the blood goes from the brain to the stomach for digestion. So probably this is why people are not following. So I had 100,000. This is how many digits? Eight? Six. I gave 20,000. How many remains? 80,000, which is? Five digits. So how do you want me to believe that charity does not decrease wealth? It decreased it. You don't have Iman. You think that money is everything. Your health is more expensive. Imagine if Allah Azza wa Jal would test you with an illness that would consume the whole hundred thousand. Would you pay it? He said, yes. So now you have 80,000 bonus gift. What about your children? Their health, their well-being, their Iman. Would you like them to be tested with their Iman? One of them becomes an atheist. Sorry, daddy, I'm a free thinker. I became an atheist. There are many out like this. When we fail to protect ourselves with charity. What about your house? What about your business? What about your vehicles and cars? All of this is money that you are saving and protecting when you give in charity. And not less, let us not look at this life. Let us look at the bigger picture. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, protect yourselves from hellfire even if by half a date, not a full one. So is there a lot of reward when I give sadaqah? Listen to this hadith. 
The Prophet said alayhi salatu salam, whoever gives sadaqah, the equivalent of a date that was acquired by halal means, for Allah does not accept anything but that which is halal. Your sadaqah has to be earned from what? From halal money. If you work in haram and you give, Allah will not accept this. You will not be rewarded for it. Yes, you can give it in form of cleansing your wealth. If you deal in riba, if you deal in, in, in insurance, haram insurance, if you deal in entertainment, haram entertainment, and the vast majority of entertainment is haram. If you deal in selling haram, the earning is haram. You give it in means of charity to cleanse, but you will not be rewarded. If you don't give it, you will be punished. It will be double punishment for you. So the Prophet says, whoever gives, gives this date, Allah accepts it in his right hand. Then he tends it for the one who gave it. As one of you tends his small horse until it becomes like a mountain. You come on the day of judgment, fearful, scared, and you're shown your good deeds. And whoa, what is this? This is not mine. Wrong address. No, 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 it's yours. I know myself. I, don't, I did not do this. And Allah will tell you, yes, you gave something that was little, and Allah Azza wa Jal made it to be this huge for you. Charity, or sadaqah, purifies your records of bad deeds. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, O people of trade, the merchants who sell and buy, long ago, you don't go to the malls to buy and, and sell. You go to the souk. And the souk is an open local market. You find tables, you go, how much is this? A hundred. Say, no, I'll buy it for 10. Okay, 80. No, I'll buy it for 15. And you start to negotiate and bargain. And most of the time, you would lie. So, by Allah, I bought it for 75. And you bought it only for five. You swore, I believe you. So, all of this means that there is a lot of sins involved in selling and buying. And trying to win a contract. The Prophet said, Alayhi Salaam, oh, people who deal in trade, O oh merchants, this transactions of yours that is selling involves idle talk and oaths. So mix it with sadaqah. So that sadaqah would purify your records from bad deeds. And if you look at Ibn al-Qayyim, when he described the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, was the Prophet rich, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. He wasn't rich uh, uh, financially. But he was rich in his heart. He used to get a lot of wealth and money and would never keep anything. And this is why the Prophet was the happiest, alayhi salatu was salam. Was the most content of whatever happened to him. He, once in a battle got something that fills two valleys between two mountains, 40,000 sheep after the battle of Hunayn. And it was on the eighth year of Hijrah. And there was a nomad, a Bedouin, standing next to him. And the Bedouin's jaw almost reached the floor. It was, he's, yeah, he, it's something beyond people's imagination, so much wealth. So the Prophet looked at him, alayhi salatu wasalam, and said, do you like this? He said, yes. The Prophet said, it's yours. Come on. Give him a sheep. Give him seven. Give him 20. Give him 1,000. Giving him the whole thing? This means that the Prophet had nothing in his heart, alayhi salatu wasalam. He had all the wealth in his hand. And this is why he was strong. If we have the wealth in our hearts, this would cause 
cardiatric as, uh, arrest or, or, or they, as they say it, it will kill you. But when you have it in your hands, the man, the Bedouin, immediately went to his tribe. He said, oh, people, come and accept Islam because I have come from someone who does not fear poverty. The whole tribe embraced Islam. So the Prophet gives, alayhi salatu wasalam, the companions give. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, if I had gold as much as the Mount of Uhud, Imagine mountain of Uhud in gold. The Prophet says, I would not like three days to pass over me without me spending it all in the cause of Allah. Except something I keep for debt because maybe I have borrowed something from here and there. I gave it away. The, the rest, I would all spend it in the cause of Allah. What is the best type of sadaqah? Is it when I'm a rich man and a millionaire? No. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, if you give in charity when you are healthy and miserly, meaning that giving away is a little bit difficult on you, fearing poverty and hoping for richness, the Prophet alayhi salam, said, do not delay. This is the best sadaqa. When you are healthy, miserly, you're afraid of poverty and hoping for being rich. Then the Prophet says, do not delay until you are at the point of death. And you say, give this to so-and-so, give this to so-and-so. We always delay. No. Now you have, you give. And if you look at the people and the categories of the people on the Day of Judgment, you will find that a person who is a scholar teaches. A person who is a mujahid, fights in the cause of Allah, is martyred in the cause of Allah. A person who prays in the masjid is a worshiper. A person who fasts is someone who's doing it for the sake of Allah. The person who gives in sadaqah, in charity, comes on the day of judgment with all of their good deeds. Because he gave money to print books, to support TV channels, Islamic, and to give lectures. So he would be like the scholar. He built a masjid so that worshipers would pray in it. So he will come with their reward. He gave iftar to break the fast and feed the people who are fasting. So he will get exactly like they are having. And he gives his money for the cause of Allah to elevate the word of Allah in jihad. And he will have the same thing. Sadaqa is something that goes beyond our imagination. The amount of reward that awaits us only if you... What? If you believe. Was sadaqatu burhan. It's a proof. It's an evidence. Was sadaqatu is something that indicates that you're sincere and truthful. What type of sadaqah is best? There are different opinions of scholars. Some of them say, there is a hadith, and it's authentic by Albani. He said that the Prophet wasallam said, the best of sadaqah is to provide water. So if you dig a well, like we have seen in Yemen and elsewhere, this is part of the best of sadaqah. Others say, scholars, whatever is needed. So sometimes, in famine-struck areas, feeding them and providing them with water to drink is the best. In other places, maybe building a masjid. In other places, building an orphanage. But it goes without doubt that all of these work need to be associated with knowledge. I can feed a mouth. I can provide a shelter. But I need to give 
the children proper knowledge of their religion that would stay with them until the day they die. Feeding them, nourishing them, clothing them, sheltering them are all good deeds. <coughs> but without knowledge of the Quran, and you, you've seen in the presentation, the circles of knowledge among women, mashallah, they're all in hijab. They're memorizing the Quran. They're learning about aqidah and tawheed. This is more important than anything else. But it's a collective work. We need to feed and we need to teach. So all of this is combined in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. When the son of Adam dies, all his good deeds come to an end, except three. Ongoing charity, sadaqatu, al-jariyah, building a masjid, building an institute, building uh, or printing books of proper ilm, teaching people, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge. This is what we claim to be looking for, insha'Allah, in our teachers, in our professors, in our scholars who teach beneficial knowledge. And the Prophet says, alayhi salatu salam, or righteous offspring who will pray for him, whether a boy or a girl. This is part of what continues after your death. So now, after the dinner and the desserts, after you have given, you have a choice. You're alive. You can give. I urge myself and you to give generously because this is how you invest your wealth in the proper channel. Allah Azza wa Jal will substitute you, will compensate you, and will throw barakah in whatever you have left. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatu al-ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Jazakumallahu khairan to Sheikh Asim al-Hakim for the very enlightening speech of his talk titled The Worth of a Mustard Seed. May Allah Azza wa Jal bless all of our efforts collectively in our efforts in sadaqah and may he grant us this big mountain of good deeds on the Day of Judgment. Ameen. Now we would like to invite actually, if uh, Sheikh Asim could remain on stage. Our next session is actually the uh, photography session. And for that as well, we would like to invite also all the guests seated at the main table and the VIP table to join them. And as well, they will be joined by our children, from, uh, by the children from the Aisha home, as well as from Darul Mahabba. So please let us welcome on stage our children and also our beloved guests of honor for this evening. So Alhamdulillah brothers and sisters as they come on stage for the photography session Alhamdulillah these are our children uh, Some of the people who will be the beneficiaries of what we are gathering for this evening And Alhamdulillah we are very hopeful inshallah that whatever we contribute for this evening Will 
prom- will inshallah grant them to be to have bright futures ahead inshallah and there's some amazing success stories that we've had from the students and the children who have been raised in the Aisha home as well as Darul Mahabba and for example you will have stories such as in uh, Aisha home you have students such as Said Imran who are now graduated with a family and now he's working as an engineer you have uh, students like Muhammad Zuhaili who graduated in culinary arts and in fact he's one of the chefs at the Double Tree Hotel and he was also raised in the Aisha home Aisha home has been uh, there for over 20 years and we have brother Imran who's currently pursuing his studies in Egypt in Arab- Arabic studies you have sister Fatin Hazwani Uthman who graduated in civil engineering and now she's working as a project engineer so you see mashallah brothers and sisters through these collaborative efforts we have given these children the potential that we can nurture them to be the best that they can be and perhaps we never know that some of them who are on stage right now will be the change agents that the ummah will need for our future so with that we we'll like to make dua for all of you barakallahu fikum thank you very much for all of your contributions and we make dua that allah azza wa jal grants them the best in this dunya and akhirah My brothers and sisters, we have reached the end of our events for this evening. So before we dismiss ourselves, I'd like to remind all of you to make dua for every single one of us, especially the organizing committee, Rizq Ar-Rahman, and the people at Aisha Home, as well as all the other volunteers who have involved behind the scenes. There's a lot of work that goes behind the planning that you never see. But as Sheikh Asim mentioned, every single one of these efforts will be rewarded by Allah Azza wa Jal. And please make dua for all of them. And if you would like to get involved as well, they will always welcome for more volunteers to be part of their family. We all want to be part of this collaborative effort, mashallah. And perhaps you can also lend your talents. Not all of us have to be specifically skilled in one specific area or the other. Every one of us can use our talents. So please do keep in touch. And bear in mind that this is not the end. This is merely the beginning, inshallah. We hope that there will be more chances for all of us to meet and to continue to collaborate for the betterment of this ummah. 